Every year we see Gonzaga as one of the best teams in college basketball and I bet you most people don't even know where Gonzaga is or why they are even called Gonzaga. But for those of you who do know Gonzaga, they have been coached by Mark Few since 1999 and he has been at Gonzaga his entire coaching career. I feel like Gonzaga just never gets the credit it deserves when it comes to being one of the top dogs in the sport. Gonzaga it seems like every year is in the top 25 and even in the top 10 most of the time, but yet people are always trying to discredit them because of the conference they are in or the fact that they've never won a title. And thankfully, the 2017 team that made the national championship ended that debate if Gonzaga could ever get over the hump despite not winning that game. But what is the real reason for the success at Gonzaga? Well, let's talk about it. The Gonzaga program before Mark Few became head coach had only been to the NCAA tournament twice in 1995 and 1999. Their most notable alum was John Stockton who played there from 1980 through 1984, but Gonzaga was nothing compared to what it is now. During that time, Mark Few was a student at Oregon and wanted to play varsity baseball, but they dropped the team. So he graduated to Duck after transferring there from Linfield College, where he wanted to play basketball and baseball, but a shoulder injury in football in his senior season prevented that. Few was an assistant basketball coach at his high school when he was in college in 1983, and coached high school basketball until 1988 while working Oregon basketball camps before moving to Spokane, Washington to become a grad assistant for Dan Fitzgerald at Gonzaga. Few would later become a full-time assistant in 1990, and would coach under Dan Fitzgerald until until 1997, making one NCAA tournament in 1994 as a 14 seed and two NIT appearances as well. Then Dan Fitzgerald would retire and his assistant Dan Monson took over in 98. Monson lasted two seasons at Gonzaga and made the NIT second round in 98 and promoted Few to his associate head coach in 99. That 99 team would go on to win 28 games and would even make the Elite Eight as a 10 seed, narrowly losing to UConn who would go on to win the title. Munson would leave after that season to become the head coach at Minnesota, which was very abrupt because it happened in July and usually coaches leave during the March or April period. So Mark Few was now next in line to take over Gonzaga and carry on from that Elite Eight run that they had and carry over that success he did because Gonzaga has not missed a single NCAA tournament under Mark Few since he got promoted to head coach and have been one of the most dominant programs in the sport of college basketball. Sure, in the West Coast Conference, they do not play the level of competition that you would see in Power 5 leagues, but Gonzaga has been able to prove itself by winning in the NCAA tournament, and especially as of late since 2015, Gonzaga has made the second weekend of the tournament every year, and they do not lose early or choke. They back up their play. Gonzaga plays fast, has larger lineups, and get rebounds. They are the West Coast version of North Carolina, honestly, who oddly enough played them in their lone national championship appearance in a close game. Now looking back, Back from the start of Few's time as head coach, he led them to the NCAA Sweet 16 each of his first two years. He was only the second head coach in the nation to achieve this since the NCAA tournament expanded to 64 teams in 1985. Following 2002, Few set an all-time record for NCAA head coaches collecting 81 wins in their first three seasons as a head coach. And that record stood the test of time until my boy Brad Stevens at Butler surpassed it. In 2017, Mark Few became the third fastest head coach to win 500 games. The program's success has continued at Gonzaga, obviously, like I've mentioned, and he has made the NCAA tournament in every one of his years as head coach. Also, Gonzaga has advanced to the West Coast Conference Tournament title game in every season where Few has been head coach. Few was named the West Coast Conference Coach of the Year for six consecutive consecutive seasons, 2001-2006, but obviously he just dominates so much that they try to give it to other people. Now Coach Few has had a lot of great players at Gonzaga. Guys like Adam Morrison, Kelly Olenek, Rui Hachimura, Nigel Williams-Goss, DeMontis Sabonis, Kyle Wilcher, Zach Collins, Brandon Clark, Zach Norvell. I mean, you name it, he's got NBA draft picks. He's developed a lot of bigs in his time there, which is funny because Mark Few is a smaller guy. Now, from what I remember, I don't remember the Adam Morrison years for Gonzaga, and I don't really remember a whole lot of the other stuff as well. But what I do remember is starting out in that 2013 season, the Bulldogs were ranked number two in both major polls, the highest national ranking the team had ever had in the school's history. Few broke that record a week later when the Bulldogs actually got number one in both the polls. And it was the first time a West Coast Conference school had ascended to the top spot since San Francisco in 1977. Gonzaga went on to receive the first number one seed in NCAA tournament history for the school. And they had a school record 32 wins. Now obviously that team did lose in the NCAA tournament pretty early. But then again in 2015, Few led the Zags back to a number two ranking in both the polls. And they also had a 22 game winning streak that season. They were a number two seed in the NCAA tournament and lost the Elite Eight to Duke. 
but they did get a school record 35 wins. And then obviously the 2017 season, few led the Zags to arguably the greatest season in school history. They had a 29 game winning streak that season, which broke the record for consecutive wins to start a season. They were number one in the polls by February. The winning streak and number one ranking were lost when they lost to BYU on February 25th. But you know what? That actually paid off big time for them because in the in-state tournament, they went on to the final four before losing to North Carolina. And this is obviously Mark Few's big bright spot for Gonzaga. And I actually think that they can get back to a final four. I mean, they've had uh, plenty of opportunities since that game. 2018, they were very good. 2019, they were very good. Lost the Elite Eight. And even 2020, they were on their way to getting a number one seed. So it's not like Gonzaga is going anywhere anytime soon. And heading into 2021, if they return everybody back, they also get Jalen Suggs, who's one of the top point guards in the country. And it's really Gonzaga's first big time recruit top 10 kid so that's huge for them to play point guard i honestly think gonzaga might be my favorite team heading into next year and possibly be my favorite to win the national championship in indianapolis it does get pretty annoying seeing people hate on mark few and never getting over the hump and winning a national championship but i mean there's plenty of coaches who have never won a title but are obviously respected or even have one title i mean that north carolina game could have been a coin flip so to even lose that game it really doesn't affect his legacy at all to me now, like I've mentioned, Mark Few has been great at coaching the bigs, which is hilarious because he's a tiny guy. And some of his notable draft picks that were bigs were Adam Morrison, who was not a high recruit coming out of high school, but he coached him up, made him the number three pick in the draft. Kelly Olenek, actually his first two seasons, only averaged 12 to 13 minutes a game for redshirting. And then in 2013, he dominated, was an All-American, and then he was the number 13 pick in the draft. DeMontis Sabonis' dad was an NBA player, an all-time great. And even Sabonis was really good at Gonzaga, made him the number 11 pick in the draft. And Zach Collins, during 2017, only played one year at Gonzaga. Now they got to the national championship and he was splitting time with Karnowski, but he was drafted 10th overall. And even Rui Hachimura, who also was on that team, he played for Gonzaga and was drafted 9th overall after a couple seasons. And that was a hard thing actually to do because Hachimura is from Japan. So it was a bit of a culture shock for him to come here, but he adapted very well to Gonzaga and I credit Mark Few big time for that. And even his running mate, Brandon Clark, was drafted 21st overall and he had transferred to Gonzaga from San Jose State, and he was an amazing defensive player. So really, Mark Few has done an incredible job of getting guys drafted, and even some of his guys that didn't get drafted that were bigs stayed for a very long time. So I really credit Mark Few for be actually being probably the best coach in the sport at coaching bigs. Now he gets a lot of his guards as transfers, and he just fits them in, and they fit perfectly, and they really develop themselves over the season. Playing a weaker schedule does help to develop a little bit, because it can create more confidence, but it's not like they're playing terrible teams. I mean, West Coast Conference teams have been nationally relevant. And even in the non-conference schedule, Mark Few has them playing in tournaments like the Atlantis or the Maui Invitational. So it's not like Gonzaga just goes through cupcakes the entire year. It's important to do this because you want to get a good non-conference schedule to begin with. And it's also nice to get a little bit of a tournament style action going on in the non-conference to help prepare you for when you do hit the NCAA tournament, at least you've played some tournament style games before the actual NCAA tournament. So that will do it for today's video about Mark Few. Thank you so much for watching. If you're a Gonzaga fan, please make sure to like and subscribe and tell me why you love Coach Few down below. He's really one of the best coaches in the sport. And if he ever does leave Gonzaga, which I personally don't believe he would, he would be a really good coach to replace maybe a Roy Williams at North Carolina, or maybe even coach a future NBA team that comes to Seattle. So again, thank you for watching and subscribe and I'll see you later.